the coffee chat. This is honestly one of the most important tools that you can use in order to expand your career, but it is also very nerve wracking and it can be hard to know how to manage this and how to go about achieving these coffee chats or as some may call it, informational or informal interviews. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Yusuf and I'm a graduating student from the Shield School of Business based out of Toronto. And in this video, I'll be going over how you can master the coffee chat or informational interview. I'll be going over three main components, the preparation for a chat, the actual chat itself, as well as what you do after the chat. So starting off with the preparation stage, I want to actually be going over how to go about getting these type of coffee chats or interviews. If you would like some more tips on how to do that, please make sure to comment down below, leave a like to let me know and I'll make a video like that in the future. When preparing for one of these coffee chats, the number one thing that you want to keep in mind and what's going to be your best friend is research. You want to research everything you can. You want to research the person you're talking to, the company you're talking about, the industry you're talking about, and anything in between. So what I like to do before going into a coffee chat is try to find out as much as I can about the person I'm going to be talking with. So what you want to do is look their name up on LinkedIn, see if you can see their profile, um, take a brief look at their career history, their education, their interests, Google their name, see what comes up, look at company profiles, just understand who you're talking to, what they're all about, what their interests are. Additionally, another great tip that not a lot of people use is actually reach out to some of your friends or people in your network who may know this person. And you can definitely reach out and ask, hey, I'm chatting with this person. Is there anything that I should bring up? Is there anything you want me to be aware about? And this will really help you as they can provide some insight into their past conversations or let you know um, what to steer clear of, what to talk about, and that'll honestly help you build the relationship further. Next, to understand the company um, that you are going to be talking about, where this person um, is from, you want to do a couple of things. The first thing, and honestly the easiest, yet I think the most overlooked thing, is just Google the company's name. Um, in particular, you want to pay attention to stuff like the company's About Us page, their um, overview of their corporate strategy page, anything relevant and high level um, that you feel might be pertinent that may allow you to get a better understanding of the company. Additionally, and this is a tip that honestly, I feel like I'm just giving away because literally no one does this in my opinion, is go to the news tab on um, Google and actually type in the company's name followed by your city. This is great as it'll show you what news articles and what news features have been going around about that company and this gives you really good insight. You can actually use all of the tips uh, mentioned for the company um, in the same fashion for the overall industry itself. So what you actually want to do with this information is to make brief bullet notes. Don't make a whole research paper out of it because no one has time for that. But what I would do is just pull out my phone, uh, pull out the Keep app on my phone or whatever notes app you use. Write a couple of bullet points of any interesting things that you came across just so you can reference them right before you go into a chat. The goal here is to gather as much intel as possible about the person, the company, the industry, so you'll be able to frame the conversation better as well as stand out. So now that brings us to the actual chat itself. This is the stage where you guessed it, you're going to be meeting the person, whether it be in person for an actual coffee, whether it be online, whether it be wherever on the phone or anything. When you start off these conversations, it's always a good idea to introduce yourself really quickly, even if you know the person um, relatively well, um, just so it kind of gives a quick refresher. Don't make this a whole tell me about yourself um, spiel, but if you do want to learn about tell me about yourself, I did make a video on that, which is going to be uh, popping up on the cards up there. But this is just a brief introduction. And then what you want to do is really make it a natural conversation. Don't really, don't force this. Don't treat it like an interview. You want to treat it like you're meeting a friend, but definitely use more professional language. The first impression is the most important part of any interaction. So you really want to make sure to be natural, to be genuinely curious and to have this charismatic energy behind you and treat this as a conversation that you're interested in approaching the person as a friend. What you want to do next is to just reframe as to why you're meeting them. So for example, a coffee chat I had a while ago, which was actually a telephone uh, call. I mentioned that, hey, like, thanks for uh, taking the time to call with me. I just wanted to, you know, reach out. I really enjoyed talking to you at an event and uh, I wanted to learn more about what you do and see like how I can follow in your footsteps or learn from the path that you've taken. Doing this lets the other person know that you respect their time and as well as gives them a general understanding of what you're interested in and what you want to talk about right before the start of the conversation. Now, during the actual chat, um, there are two key things that you want to keep in mind. 
The first is to actively listen. You don't want to be zoning out. You don't want to be like kind of looking into space. You really want to be there actively listening to this person and doing so through your body language, repeating what they're saying, smiling and being generally interested and genuinely interested in what they're saying. And the second thing is to make sure to tie in some of the research that you did prior to walking into this chat. And what I mean by tying in is not mentioning, oh, I was looking at your LinkedIn and saw you did this. That's kind of creepy. You, you want to tie something in more subtly, um, you know, be like, oh, like what if you know that they live in a certain city or if you know that they went to a certain school, you can kind of high level bring that up um, and that will help kind of guide the conversation in that direction. I like to think of it as like being a conductor where you're really driving the direction of what the conversation is and you're in control. And if you take that mindset going into a conversation, then you will be in control of it. Lastly, you really want to be mindful of the person's time. Typically, uh, from my experience, coffee chats tend to be on average between 15 to 30 minutes. Really depends on the industry you're in. What I like to do is when you're talking, um, somehow slide in and ask, oh, by the way, what's your hard stop? And a hard stop, if you're not aware of, is just the last, the absolute like, latest time that they can stay out. And that means that if you go past this point, they literally just have to leave. Generally though, um, I don't usually ask that. Um, I generally kind of tend to go with the flow. Um, you really wanna read the other person's body language, see if they're pointing towards a certain direction, listen to see if they're saying something in particular that could give you the hint that they wanna end the conversation. It's better to end the conversation off right at the climax of it, at like a high note, rather than let it fizzle out towards the end because what that does in the mind of the other person is that if you end the conversation while it's good, it leaves them with a good note in their mind and makes them want to continue the conversation. Lastly, at the end of the chat, um, make sure that you thank the person for their time, um, as well as mention that you'd like to stay in touch um, and uh, any other particular closing remarks that you may want to uh, offer. It can be hard um, when you're first doing it, but honestly, the more you do it, the more you understand and the more you'll be able to kind of navigate that space. Congratulations, you've now made it to the end of your chat. This is something that's great because it shows that you're taking the first step towards building your network, expanding your career, as well as getting to know more people. Now, what you do after the chat ends is arguably the most important part of the whole process. Because now you get to set the direction of where you want this particular relationship to head. Do you want it to be a long-term relationship? Um, do you want it to be a mentor-mentee relationship? Do you want to not continue this relationship? Which is perfectly okay as well, but you really want to after a conversation, know what you wanna do with the person that you had the conversation with. The first thing you wanna do after any chat is to send a thank you note or follow up note. I made a video recently about how to send a thank you note after an email. Um, it'll pop up um, on the top right of the screen, I believe. So you can check that out. Um, it'll give you a great idea of how to frame it. Typically, um, it would be similar to what I talked about in that video where you wanna keep it really brief thank them for their time, uh, but it doesn't have to be as formal as you uh, as you would um, in an interview. In terms of how much time you should let pass before you reach out to them, I would say that uh, once again, as I talked about in my previous video, is if you talk to them in the morning, you can reach out by the end of the day. If it's later in the day, then maybe within 24 hours, but typically you wanna reach out within 24 to 48 hours, um, just as a general rule of thumb. Um, in regards to where to reach out, just reach out to them where you reached out to them in the first place. So whether it was LinkedIn, email, phone, uh, whatever it was, um, just send a note through that platform. In general, you wanna mention any particular things you talked about, any action items that you discussed. For example, if they said to send over your resume or anything like that, uh, make sure that you do that promptly and include that within your thank you note. And then based on the goals that we outlined earlier as to like where you see this relationship going, you will then be periodically checking in, giving some sort of updates. You might want to meet up for a follow-up chat. Don't treat it as like something that you're getting something out of it because at the end of the day, you want to ensure that both people are enjoying the conversation and all conversations are two ways. A quick tip um, that I like to mention is that I sometimes like to keep a, a spreadsheet um, either on Excel, Google Sheets, or this um, platform called Notion where I keep track of the people I've talked to and create some sort of like brief notes as to like what they like, when their birthdays are, any particular information that I need, um, just to have an idea, as well as the last time I reached out to them. This really helps me keep track um, of uh, maintaining that relationship with them. So before we end off here, um, I just want to give a quick tip um, regarding something I didn't mention earlier, which is what to wear to some of these chats if you're doing them in person. Typically, you wanna follow the dress code of the company that the person works at. So for example, if you know the company is known to be more formal, uh, so that would be your banks, 
then you know that you might want to wear something like a suit. But if you know that it's a more laid back type of company, then uh, you should be okay with business casual. It's better to be slightly overdressed than underdressed. Now with that, we've come to the end of this video. Coffee chats, as I mentioned, are an invaluable tool and are really useful to help build your network. I really hope that these tips are able to help you. And um, once again, just like anything, these things take practice, where the first couple of ones you're going to go to will inevitably be awkward. You won't know what to say, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And it'll help you with your overall career journey, as well as help you figure out what you want to do in life and meet new people. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like this video, hit that subscribe button. And as always, reach out to me in the comment section down below or on Instagram or LinkedIn for any questions you may have regarding university, early career, and anything in between. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.